everyone welcome back to my channel so tonight I'm going to be making some baklava um, and baklava is one of my favorite desserts um, tends to be a little bit on the sweeter side however it's a dessert <laughs> this is something that I normally make around the holidays whether it be Christmas or more so for New Year's but um, it's also a recipe that people have requested me to make. So whether it be for potluck, large family gathering, it has always been a hit. Now I cannot take credit for this recipe. This is from Michael Simon. So I won't have the recipe printed down below in the description. However, you will get the idea of what goes in it. If you'd like to search for it, um, I will try to find a link for the recipe and put it down below. So for my ingredients, I have phyllo dough, of course. Um, for the phyllo dough, use whatever brand you'd like. Um, I store mine in the freezer, and when I plan to make something, I take it out, put it in the fridge the night before to defrost. Um, I'm using walnuts for my baklava. I know some people, they tend to use pistachio. I happen to think for this that walnuts give a better flavor. And to this bowl, I also have some dried plain breadcrumbs. Um, you do want to use both the breadcrumbs and the nuts together. I am going to be using some melted butter. Um, I find that the recipe calls for more butter than you actually need. So typically I melt about one and a quarter to one and a half sticks. Um, you'll need some water, some sugar, cinnamon, lemon, fresh lemon please, and some honey. And again, for the honey, use what you like. However, this is just, um, you know. A wild mountain honey but you can use clover or anything else that you like something pretty mild in flavor a really helpful here you're going to need a pastry brush and this is going to be for your melted butter now more than anything this is about the assembly and preparation if you're planning to serve this you want to make it at least a day ahead and this will give the chance for the syrup and the the phyllo dough to absorb everything and it'll be really nice. This version tends to be a little juicier than what you get at maybe an Armenian bakery or even a Greek bakery um, and it's always been my favorite. It is Armenian approved, I want to tell you that um, because I've had different cultures taste it and yes, they like it. So don't worry about making your syrup right now. We're going to put together the nuts, breadcrumb, and phyllo, and butter uh, together. Um, first thing, I want to add some cinnamon to my nut and breadcrumb mixture. So with the nuts, breadcrumb, and cinnamon, you do want to mix this up really well so that it's evenly distributed and set this aside. The butter I did first because you want to let it cool off a little bit. Um, the nuts, breadcrumb, and cinnamon, you want to mix this together really well um, so everything is evenly distributed. And then you're going to set this aside and then you're going to prep your phyllo. And there is no need to pre-toast the walnuts because they're going to be in the oven for about an hour. So no need to do that. You just go ahead and chop them up finely. Now the other thing that's really important here, you do not want your phyllo dough to dry out. So what I've done, I've taken a kitchen rag, I've run it under some water, then um, wring it out really well so that it's not soaking wet. Um, you, you want to keep your phyllo dough from drying out and this is gonna prevent that. However, if your rag is really wet, it's just gonna make the phyllo dough wet and that's another problem in and of itself. So damp, ringed out dishcloth and you're going to sandwich your phyllo in this. Now within your box of phyllo it's usually divided into two and again to prevent this from drying out I'm just going to deal with one package and then I'll open the other one when I am ready for it. And 
And as you unroll this, you can go ahead and leave the plastic sheet and then you're just gonna open this up. And then this will be ready. So this is what I mean. You wanna have the dish rag folded over and when you're not dealing with it. So it's just really helpful. And my dish, I'm using a Pyrex baking dish. I think this is nine by 13. I've always used the same one and this is a little bit wider and I like using this because when I lay the phyllo dough out, you're not gonna have too much um, coming up on the sides. And this one is about maybe two inches in depth and it's also a really nice um, height for this purpose. So to the bottom, I'm gonna brush it with some melted butter. And then I'm going to start laying down the phyllo. Um, I would bring the butter up against the sides a little bit and this will just make it easier to come out later. My first layer is going to be 10 sheets of phyllo and you're going to brush this with butter in between each layer. Um, if you're, okay, so if your phyllo breaks, some of them will, try to piece it together like a puzzle and because you're going to be layering it, it's not too terrible, you know, it will be fine in the end, it will all be fine. Um, okay, so if you're afraid that your phyllo dough is going to move around a lot, you could tap the butter on and that will help. Um, Especially in the beginning, it may not behave, but it will. And you're going to do 10 layers of phyllo. That's my oven. Um, 10 layers of phyllo, and then you're going to do your first layer of nuts and breadcrumb. And yes butter in between each layer. This is what's going to give it flakiness and make it taste super, super delicious because you can't go wrong with, you know, butter and sugar and nuts in a dessert. After the first few layers, you'll probably get a rhythm to it and you'll find your groove here. Okay, now it's I mean, honestly, it could not be easier. You do want to put your first layer. This does not have to be um, like a thick layer because you're going to be doing this more than once. And your walnuts will, you know, once you've ground them up, some will be floury pieces and then others will be a little bit thicker and that's okay. It'll give um, your baklava some texture, which is also fantastic. Um, and then you're just gonna continue. So the base layer of phyllo is 10 sheets. You're gonna do your nuts and breadcrumbs, and then you're gonna do four layers, repeat the process, repeat the process, um, for about three layers. I do drizzle the nuts with a little bit of butter too. I don't have to like make the brush touch the nuts, but um, that will also help cook and toast your walnuts and it'll be really, really lovely. And then you're going to continue.
your layering, um, especially after um, doing a layer of your nut filling, uh, you do want to press this down a bit to make sure that there's no big air bubbles and that will help you get really good results. And if your butter starts to congeal, which depending on the temperature of your kitchen, that can happen, um, just go ahead and put it on the stove for a couple of seconds and that will fix that problem. You do want to take the butter all the way to the edges. And this is because if you don't, the edges, they're not gonna burn. They're gonna stay like this really pale color. I think I'm gonna do, oh, maybe one more. I lose count sometimes, so I just, I just um, make it until I start running out of things, either the filler dough or the filling, but I did not measure this time, so I think um, I might have a little extra filling. And also don't forget to take it like to the corners because sometimes the corners, they don't get, they don't get enough. about four layers of nuts and now I'm gonna do my top I want to put on about seven sheets of phyllo dough okay so this is my last layer and I've got like just enough butter, I didn't melt too much or too little. And you want to give a good coat to the top. And now that this is the last layer, you can actually um, seal the edges a little bit more. As you can see, the width really agreed with the width of my phyllo, which I'm quite happy about. And now this is almost ready for the oven. Now, when you make anything with phyllo dough and it bakes and cooks, it gets very crumbly and very crackly. So I'm gonna pre-cut this. Um, and I usually do, like you'll start from the middle and you'll kind of score it a little bit and then maybe, yeah. Just as a guide, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but I like to have relatively even pieces. Um, so I'm gonna go across one way and then go across the other way, and then I'm gonna do diagonals. When you're cutting this, it's best to go like straight up and down. You may need to use your finger a little bit, but pre-cutting is going to make your life so much easier after it's done baking. And definitely take it all the way up to the edge of your phyllo dough. Um, now I know because it's the top layer and the last seven layers have basically fused together, you may feel it lifting and that's normal and that's fine. That is why I'm using my fingers to kind of hold this together so it doesn't go all over the place. So this is now pre-cut. It's ready to go into the oven until it is a nice golden brown. Um, for me, it usually takes about 50 minutes to an hour, all depending. But I'll just keep my eye out on it, and once you start smelling the toasted walnuts, then you'll know it's getting there. It's on the way there. So what is the purpose of pre-cutting your baklava? Well, after it's done baking, 
you'll see some magic happen <laughs> and then um, it'll just be easier when you lift it out and serve it instead of having a big crumbly mess it'll still be left beautiful and appealing to the eye instead of like this messy crumbly phyllo dough disaster it's not a disaster it still tastes really good but it'll just be a lot easier when you want to serve it and if you do have leftover walnuts this is really good um, if you make crepes you can use it as a filling and then just add a little bit of sugar maybe some lemon juice or lemon zest and that'll be really good for the next part I'm going to be making my sugar honey syrup um, my baklava is not done baking but it's a light golden brown so I do want to get started on the syrup because it's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes so to a pot, I have my sugar, my honey, and my water. This is going to come to a little simmer, let the sugar dissolve, and I'm going to let this cook until it remains really clear, and that's going to take maybe about five to seven minutes. Now, I will say, it's only about almost a cup of honey that you use. I like to get something like this, this is 16 ounces, and then I just pour out half. Instead of having to measure it in a measuring cup, which with honey can kind of get a little bit messy, it's a lot easier. I have this over medium heat, and I am going to watch it and stir every so often. So it is gonna start bubbling and foaming, and this is fine. You do wanna stir this. I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit but this is what's going to um, cook your sugar have the sugar and honey come together the foam will end up subsiding so don't worry about that so as you can see um, I have this simmering the bubbles are um, calming down a little bit and if you move it you can see that the mixture below is clear I want to keep cooking this for a few more minutes and stir especially the edges to scrape down any thickened sugar honey mixture. Okay, after this is cooked for about 10 minutes, um, you're going to add your lemon juice and whisk well. And cook this for a couple more minutes. You're Walter White of the kitchen. So you're going to want to let this rest overnight uncovered or just covered very lightly with a kitchen towel. The next day when you're ready to serve it up, you're going to just go in with a knife again and cut through the entire thing because when you scored it, you might not have gotten through the bottom and this will just help the baklava come out evenly nicely nothing's missing in the or stuck to the dish as you can see there's not a lot of liquid left in the plate because the baklava absorbed everything um, this is one of the last pieces it is juicy and delicious I tend to put a little bit of extra honey um, in my syrup and these I have plated like this because it'll be easier for individuals to pick up and take. Now, when I think of desserts and the range of sweetness, this definitely airs on the more sweet side. So my recommendation is a little espresso without sugar or coffee without sugar. The point here is if you're eating the baklava, have something else with no sugar in it because the bitter and the sweet will balance each other out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will try to find the recipe, a link to the recipe, and have it down below in the description box if you're interested in making this yourself and you need some guidance as far as measurements. I don't measure anymore because I've made this so many times that it's, um, pretty easy for me but maybe you do need some more precise details 
Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate the support. And I will see you all next time.